have a motor that came in that I had built a while ago. Then he shipped it to somebody else to transfer all the stuff into a different case, I think is what he said. Um, and then he said it's never run right. So he shipped it back here to see if I could figure out what is wrong with it. So I'm going to pull it out. start from square one. First thing I always like to do, which I don't think I filmed yet, is break out the old ohm meter, multimeter, and check the stator. This is about the number one thing I run into why bikes never run right always something with the electrical so I'm gonna pull the pickup first and that's the striped wires the green stripe and the red stripe they're white with the green stripe and a red stripe and that's the pickup that's the little pickup that rides on the outside of the flywheel or magneto as the service manual says and that looks like it is 112 which I believe falls within the good working resistance the coils which are the stator coil windings 17.3 which is a good working stator pickup Okay, the green to the red, which is the coil windings, 13.7 to 20.5, and it was 17.3, so we're right good. Okay, here's the white and the white with the red and the white with the green, which is the pickup, which says 94 to 140. And what did that, what did that just test at that I said? 117? Now you can see somebody's half tore this apart, no intake. The hose line, uh, hose clamp for the water line from the case to the head is loose. Looks like maybe he had some leakage here because he has some tape around this piece. We'll redo that. There are no bolts holding the, holding the side clutch cover on here. There's no dipstick. That's missing. So should have at least something holding it on just a bolt while you're shipping it just to give you peace of mind looks like stuff is flowing around in here <laughs> this is all dinged up like a screw or something got loose you can tell when havoc's been uh played with in here um, stuff gets all dinged up when screws or anything comes loose I'm not sure if these plugs were in it and running or not, but I always like to look at the plugs. The plugs will tell you all about a motor. But since I don't know if these were in there running with the motor or not, we won't worry about them. They look okay. If they were really looking bad, I would ask the customer, were those the ones running? You can see that there's three bond on that little key insert on the primary gear that I like to do. Um, a lot of people, that's a common thing because it leaks through here sometimes. So it's always good to have that there. Pull this head off and look down inside it. Pull this side cover off to uh, see how that uh, flywheel looks. Oh, it was missing one down there. That usually is, is somebody stripped or boogered that hole up. No. It's just a little dirty, I guess, from not being used. We'll make sure he gets a bolt for that because 
that just promotes dirt and junk in there and then somebody goes to stick a bolt in there and boogers it up, snaps it off, and then it's no good for use ever. We'll chase it if the that doesn't clean it up. There, now it's nice and clean. That's better. He just needs just needs a bolt in there. We'll get one and set it aside for him because you don't want that getting messed up. These things get messed up enough without trying. The silicone never fails. It does mean a little more of a cleanup, but the cleanup doesn't take any longer than trying to pull these smashed copper washers off here. And you can't lift the head when they're on there. They all get hung up. There's the first look. What do you think? You see anything? Looks all normal from the top, no detonation. That's a good sign. You can tell he wasn't burning anything because everything's just black as soot. I think I found some suspicious stuff hanging on. It didn't, didn't look real close, but can you see all the debris? Can that be caught on film? Film. <laughs> we don't use film. It's all electronic. You can see that we have some foreign material all over the place. We'll see what that is as we tear the motor down. I have no idea. See these? That's how the studs should be. Don't go tightening your studs down so much that it warps the aluminum and disfigures the Nicosil in here and ruins your motor. It will. You'll crack the Nicosil trying to torque these things down. You can hand tighten them down and that's it. Any Nicosil cylinders, I suggest not torquing these down. Sometimes these flywheels can be a pain to pull off. We'll see how this one goes. This motor feels pretty loose, like somebody had taken half of it apart. That nut came off very easy, which means somebody was in here looking at everything already. That's how a flywheel should pop off. They don't always do that, and the Woodruff key is there. These are reverse thread tighten to get these pullers in. They don't reverse thread pull when they apply pressure, but it's a reverse thread to get them in and then out. Pull this stator out. We already checked it. We know it's good. It's an OEM. Might have bought a new stator for it, thinking that might have been the issue he was having. Somebody hacked away at this plus and minus for some reason. So you can see a plus five, but you can't see all the little individual lines like you used to the they cut them out for some reason. I'm gonna check the port timings on this. Originally I ported it and he just wanted me to double check the port timing. Just pick yourself up a degree wheel at Jegs or Summit 
This is the same thing you degree a cam in on a V8 motor. So all I do is get the piston at the top of one of the ports. This is the exhaust port starting to open up. I top dead center it on the degree wheel. And then I see how long in rotation I go down, open the port up, come back up, close the port, and see the duration of how long that is open. About a 198-199 on the exhaust duration, which is good. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the transfer. Okay. 130, 131. So that's good. Port timing durations on this are good as far as the transfer and exhaust are concerned. This is a 421 cup. V Force 4 reed cage, and all the reeds are intact. They're not cracked, they're not split. They are, don't appear to be open and butterfly in back. You're not hurting anything when you're doing that. Some people freak out on the videos. Oh my God, you're beating the hell out of the motor. <laughs> Come on. Everything looks okay. I don't see any cracks, any breaks, any bad stuff in the Nicosil. Everything looks golden. And uh, it's one heck of a poor job if I do say so myself. Somebody's got some skills. But anyway, I digress. Although everything looks is looking normal, we might have to throw it in a test chassis and run it because obviously it doesn't look like it was running right at all by the burn. Just taking the lockout off. No, the clutch looks brand new. No rainbowing, no, nothing nowhere. Looking for any chipping of the gears. Everything looks good. Why isn't this thing running right? Getting that locking tab off that big 32 millimeter nut. Come off balance because that shift shaft will want to come out. Everything looks good. Missing the half moon clip here that clips the upper and lower case together again I see this a lot these are this is missing that's not a big deal it's not going to keep the motor from running right I'll adjust it up a little bit but overall it's okay 
We're going to take the gears off just so I can change the seals. We're not going to put the same seals back on. That's a little chewy, but you can use uh, all the rest of these sides to lock it over. Put a new one on there. What do you think? Anything catch your eye? Said he had shifting problems. Yeah, everything looks good. Even the shift forks look perfect. Which probably tells me problem was not in the motor it might have been in the coil or the CDI or the wiring harness but uh, we'll clean this all up and assemble it we'll check the compression and then we'll run it in the chassis one little thing I thought I would add in here is how do you tell what size block you have well, again, you take a pair of calipers, you measure. 421 will come in just about a 104 millimeter. So this one is 103.80. And that's right, 103.80 to 103.90, somewhere right in there, just under that 104 mark. That's a 421 Cub. <laughs> this is one that wasn't going to leak. He put a lot of 3-bond on that. wonder if it had a leak there. But uh, that guy doesn't want to come off very easy. And it's not that big a deal. We're going to replace this... Uh, seal here so it doesn't matter if we gack it up there it's coming Ugh. <laughs> we have clean cases here I'm going to push in the seals this is the clutch actuator on the top of the case seal they all go in real easy I'm gonna do the shift seal right here. They're all oiled up. Transmission, all cleaned and checked. Gonna just align the slider with the fork there. Forks are good. Let's put in all the half moon clips. One for the crank. And then this small one over here by the idle kick gear. All right, trying to do this in one take and not have it take too long so you can see how it goes. You just gotta line the sliders up with the shift forks. You gotta turn the gear so they will slide into place. Of course, when the camera's on, nothing wants to go fast. There we go. 
backwards and forwards, make sure everything's lined up good. All right, sprocket side seal. Make sure you don't fold them over so the spring pops off the back. Remember, these all have springs on the rear of them. You don't want them folding over and popping that spring out. All right, transmission set. There we go. Seal raised in towards the bearing. The side that looks like it should go in goes out. It lines up with the rib in the case to the rib on the, the seal there. This is all looking good. Dowel pins are in. Uh, we slide the clutch actuator in. The top case uh, gasket is on for the cylinder. All right, time to three bomb this thing up. This thing looks like it's ready to be sealed back up. Up. And in. In case you forgot, that's 18 foot-pounds across the bottom and 7.2 foot-pounds across the top. Putting the stator on, I always put the Woodruff key in first, get it flat and level. Slide the stator through the side case for the wiring there. These stator plate bolts like to be at 7.2 foot pounds per the manual per the service manual yeah right on the five mark i'll see if this uh magneto will go on correctly Centering these up is always a fun job. Sometimes they go on nice like that. And sometimes they don't ever want to go on. A little Loctite. And this calls for 58 pounds of torque. 18 thousandths from the rise on the magneto to the pickup that looks perfect i'm going to use my box top cheater we had a perfect 18 thousandths this one's got a case saver these are great to have you can see that this has already been whacked and cleaned you don't want your chain whacking the case. It can break it open and then uh, you either have to weld or get a new case. This piece um, is 1211 three bonded in also. It has one O-ring on the back side. It just pulls out, pushes in and uh, three bolts hold it.
we are just going to stick this on loosely because I think I'm going to have to run this one here. I don't didn't find any problems with it, but he turned it in saying that it wasn't making any power and the shifting was not going well. Well, all the shifting, the forks, the bearings, the transmission, uh, everything looks flawless. Pro Mod cut. And there was nothing in it at all that said that it would not shift right. So if he was having shifting problems, it was laid somewhere else. A lot of times it's just in the setup, how you adjust everything, which is your throttle, or which is your clutch cable here and up at the perch of the handlebar. So we'll make sure that it's running good when it leaves. This shift shaft was pre-adjusted and locked down. I, it looked good. I adjusted it a little bit higher on the upside of the claw. I always like the upside having a little more gap because they'll always sag. They'll, the top will always sag onto the dowel on the star here. So adjust it as high up as you can get it because over time they're just going to sag down. This came in without a plate. The little plate that uh, ties the upper case here with the lower case right around the transmission shaft, the second shaft there, the forward shaft. So I got one off the shelf and a couple screws, of course Loctite. This bearing here had no cap on either side, so it goes either way. The factory ones always had a cap. At least I think all years had caps. And if they don't, they are replacements. I could be wrong. That's the way I've always seen them. Remember, these machined tolerances can be very close right here. So you have to square these up perfect. And they can be a bear sometimes. And you don't want that spring popping off that seal. And that one went in perfect. Sometimes they, they're perfect and sometimes they are not. Right here on the key because that area can be prone to leaking. Not always, but we don't like to take the chance. Loctite. Remember, this washer is beveled. If it's not, it's not the right one. Concaved. Shape like this goes on like that. Nut flattens it out, kind of locks it. Forty-seven foot-pounds. Now let's put that clutch basket back on. Washer. Clutch basket. First. A bushing. Gears all lined up, primary and idle. And then the next washer. Then the inner boss. Clutch locking tab. Lock washer. And then the 32 millimeter nut. OK, 
Okay, get these blue, beautiful clutches back on. Fiber, steel, fiber, steel until you're all the way back out. This is an aftermarket one, so you're not worrying about where the nubs are. If you have the stock OEM one or the one with the nubs around here, you do every other ear. Forty-seven foot pounds. Okay, we're going to now it's time to put on the lockout. So we'll insert the rod and then the ball. The clutch throwout plate. Remember, arrows line up with the the uh, oval notch there. Can do any one of the arrows. It's a 50-50 chance. I just pop it on, and if I get it, yay. If I don't, I pick it up, slide it over one, push it back down. I don't pay attention to the arrows or dimple any longer. I insert the spring. These are all the same springs. Sometimes you do three and three. Then we take the lockout and we just put it right over the top. And then we tighten. This is a, these are number fives, I believe. Five Allens. Kind of have to feed it evenly. It likes to go in evenly our stuff will get a little cross threaded up just every one of them a little a little turn got to keep the fingers all in there it's low enough they can't fall out now All right. These by factory 7.2. If you get them too tight, they'll strip the inside of the, the threads out. Okay. I don't like this here. This is not in play correctly because this is not free spinning. If it's pinched in there, it's not going to uh allow it to float and the ball will weld to that rod again i'm going to adjust this by taking the shim out of the back so take note of that once the lockout is back off and the springs are uncompressed this spins fine but we need it to spin when it's all tightened down so i'm going to Put it in like this. I just grabbed it in the rear because it's not slotted. A pair of vice grips and broke the nut loose. I adjusted this about a half a turn because it was in too deep for my liking. Now I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to take one of these. This is boogered up so they don't want to come off easily. But I'm just going to take one of these off. And what I'm going to do is take the back one off because this is, acts like a, a nice big washer that the, the needle bearings can roll on. Uh, needle bearing and one washer and we are going to see how that works. Put it up through the center. And then just put the nut on it and we'll have to do some adjusting. Since this one is new, you like how I did that?
That's how it should work, just like that. Hey, I got the block and the pistons back on. I videoed it, but I accidentally left the music on, and YouTube don't like those copyright infringements, so... I'm just putting the nuts on this 421 block. The center nuts lower here. This is a common practice. You shave the shoulders off because it's a little tight down here. So uh, shoulders on it um, can hit and it won't go on correctly. Sometimes it'll even do it on these front ones. So you can shave the shoulders off. You can buy ARPs, uh, whatever uh, suits your fancy there. Okay, I got a new O-ring pack here. The old O-rings were fine, but let's just put on new ones just to be safe. There's two for there. Two for there. Two for there. All the rest go in the trash. O-ring packs will cover multiple heads. So don't panic if you can't find use for all of them. I have guys call me and go, oh, I got a bunch of O-rings left over. Where do they go? I'm like, if you can't find a hole for them, they don't go with your head. All you got to do is make sure all the machined grooves are filled with O-rings. Grease them up, stick them in. I know this makes for boring content, but some people want to see how the O-rings fit in. Lots of grease. The grease holds them in so when they are upside down they don't fall out. These are 68 domes, so these O-rings usually like a little stretch when they're greased. Give them a little yank, because they go from 64 to 68. They're all the same size. Keyed in. Got to line the key up. Make sure all the O-rings are going to stay. This one keeps trying to pop out. Don't know if I have enough grease on the other side. Took the studs. Some of them I screwed out. They're not even all the way down. You can do this. There's plenty of threads there. I got my old spark plugs holding the domes in so they don't fall out when I go upside down. I get down here level with it. Slide it on. Make sure none of the O-rings fall out. Then I take each one of these, I three bond it because I don't like using the copper washers. I like the three bond. And I just do this every time I take off the head, put a little three bond on there. It seals better than the copper washers, believe it or not. Take out the old spark plug holders. Start tightening it all down. Somebody mentioned to me on one of my YouTube videos is like, hey, you didn't show a squish test or a leak down test. So let's do a real squish test. All you need is a piece of um, solder wire. It squishes real easy. And you just need it in a thickness thicker than what your squish is going to be. This one's 62. So we are hoping for a 50,000 squish. Or somewhere right in that neighborhood. Remember, stuff comes out different all the time. People measure different. And then you're going to have tolerances. Differences from... The person casting the block, the person cutting the head, and of course the company doing the cases. So, 
we've got a light touch we roll it through you just put it in line with the wrist pin so you can go this way and this way on both cylinders now that one's squished and let's see what we got here just take a pair of calipers and looks like we got about a 48 that's a, a good squish gonna check on the water and color on this one even though everything was pretty new on it he paid for the total disassembly and all the seals so we're gonna use them all this one's running a lockout a finger lockout as you can see and have seen me take it apart and put it back together when you run a, this style of lockout, this finger lockout, you have to run a extended clutch cover. So this case cover is actually out uh, a couple inches. Now you have to be careful when you bolt one of these on your bike because some of them aren't notched like this. And even if they are, you can still see contact of the rear brake and see this contact you don't think it's much but after a while it will wear itself through and this will start leaking so if you run one of these make sure you space the peg and the rear brake out so it clears all this that's how you do it now we're just taking this off Somebody used three bond in there. I think it's three bond, our grease. Yeah, it's three bond, our case sealer. But it looks like the three bond variety. I will punch that out and we will seat a new one in. He was holding on. The bearing. Nice and smooth. No crunchies. Got water side. It says water side. Put it on in. And push it in as far as I can with my thumbs. And then give it a little tap. one's being very cooperative everything's sliding right in plenty of clearance plenty of clearance Clarence put the pin in get it centered add on add on and the clip And everything's back together. Doesn't take much to hold a leak. Put a new kicker seal in too while we're here. Even though this one is brand new. All right, let's get the rest of this together. We're gonna put on the little O-ring there. Grease it up. I bolted this 421 Cub into my test chassis because we are going to test run it, but 
What I want to do first is take a compression test on it, static, and you can do that without the intakes on, without the pipes on. If the intakes and pipes are on and the carbs, you got to hold your throttle wide open as you kick it so it'll get air in it. This way, plenty of air goes in and plenty of air goes out, and I don't want to have to do any more if the compression comes up bad. It seemed like it had um, some wear in it, perfect wear, um, where people get fooled that they think it's okay because it looks good. But uh, when it starts looking real smooth and the rings are gapped a little large, then we start uh, losing compression. So we're going to check that here. One seventy is low for the domes that this is having in it. These are twenty cc domes. These should be like one ninety, 190, one ninety five, eighty, ninety five, yeah, twenty five down. That's, I'd say that's time for rebuild, new nickel, because the pistons are brand new. Pistons and rings, or we shouldn't say brand new, but. He's not putting out the power he wants, and the last thing he did was put pistons and rings in it. We're gonna nickel and piston and ring this thing and see what it does after that. It's 170 right now. Watch when we rebuild the top end, which is expensive. The nickel plating is expensive, but it's time. And then I'll show you what the compression is static wise after we're done it'll take four or five weeks they're really backed up on doing nickel so since this motor seems to be down about 25 to 30 psi i'm gonna say that's what's wrong with his motor he says it wasn't making enough power he says it felt really dead and he had just got it rebuilt he is, uh, I've had this motor twice, I think, and then he sent it off to somebody else the last time, I think maybe because I was busy, I wasn't getting back to him, and he got it back, and it, he says it's just never run right. It was fine. The other person did a fine job. This was together. Everything looked good. It's just worn. You could tell by the rings are gapped a little wide. It's a little bit too much gap. The minimum gap's there, but the maximum was a little bit too much. And uh, the 25 to 30 PSI down on compression said, nope, it's not going to run to its potential being 25 to 30 PSI down. So I'm going to pull it apart and I'm going to send it in. We will put new pistons and rings, even though these ones are pretty new. We're not we're not goofing around anymore. Brand new pistons and rings, brand new Nicosil. It'll take a little while, it'll cost a little money, but drag racing is not cheap, people. But this motor went without any Nicosil six or seven years on drag racing. Um, and that's pretty good. So you can get six or seven years out of a motor. Now, he has had a couple sets of pistons and rings through it, but you get that much out of a motor and um, you know, you've done good. So time for some new Nicosil. Whew. We don't get a lot of bugs in California, but I love shooting those flies with these bug assaults. You ever get one of these? These are fun.